In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this cute swaddle doll. The pattern is easy to use for beginners, and the doll is perfect for toddlers who aren't ready for larger dolls. To make this doll, you need the pattern pieces from the Blue Whimsy pattern, which you can find on Etsy, a piece of felt for the hair, flannel for the blanket, muslin or broadcloth for the skin, pink flesh-colored and black embroidery thread, and a piece of ribbon. I've decided to make a girl baby doll today. Um, so I've started by cutting out my pattern pieces from the Sleepy Heads doll pattern. You can download that from the Etsy site. Um, and I'm going to start by tracing the face from the body piece onto the piece that I've cut out for the body. To embroider the face, you need three strands of pink embroidery thread for the mouth, three strands of skin color for the nose, and three strands of black embroidery thread for the eyes. I'm going to show you how to do a back stitch to do the eyes, and a split stitch that you can use for the nose and for the mouth. For the back stitch, start, start your stitch one stitch in from where you started the eye outline. and then go back to the beginning to complete that stitch. When you come up from the back again, you're going to go one stitch past and then to complete that stitch you'll go backwards to join to the, the previous stitch. I'm just finishing up the second eye. If you don't have an embroidery hoop, you can do this without as well. I've done quite a few freehand and it works okay. Um, I find an embroidery hoop just makes it a little bit easier. When you get to the end of the eye, complete your last back stitch. And then to do the eyelashes, you'll come up at the end of the eye and do one stitch for the first eyelash and a second stitch for the bottom eyelash and then tie a knot in the back. To do this, um, a little trick I use is I hook the needle through just a bit of the back embroidery thread and then as I pull that through I keep that loop and I'm going to put my needle through from the front once and then put that thread through a second time from the front and when you pull that it should pull nice and tight to the eye. Gently pull that knot. So I've done the nose with a split stitch. I've used two split stitches for the nose and I'll show you how you do a split stitch for the mouth. So from the back come up from the back and just make a regular stitch about three millimeters long and then when you come up for the second stitch, you're going to come up halfway through. So you're splitting that embroidery thread from the first stitch in half. And then again for the next one, come up halfway through, split that embroidery thread in half. and I use about four split stitches for the mouth. And finish it with a knot at the back. For the doll's blanket, take each of the three blanket pieces and turn the top edge a quarter of an inch downward and press.
After I embroidered the face, I sewed the front hair piece onto the doll around the edge, staying a quarter of an inch from the edge around the outside, and then getting a little bit closer when I sewed around the inside hairline. I also took the bottom layer of the front blanket piece, and I sewed it down along the top edge, and based it just around the, the bottom outside edge so that was um, secured in place. For the back blanket piece, I had ironed that down in the back and I sewed two inches from the top, I just secured that down. If I had wanted to make a boy doll, I would have used a different piece of flannel obviously and I also would have used um, the boy hair piece and not done eyelashes on the face. So for the front layer, or the top layer of the front blanket piece, um, I've used my pattern piece and I've marked off where I want the pleats to be on the front. I'm not too fussy with this, but I, I like an approximate location for them. And then rather than ironing the pleats, I usually just pinch up about a quarter of an inch and then fold it upwards. I find if I iron it, it doesn't look like a natural fold in the blanket, so I just pinch it up and go straight to the sewing machine to secure that in place. And then I'd continue down and pinch up the next pleat. So I'm just finishing up that last pleat. And if I look at that front blanket piece before I attach it to the rest of the body, You can see that it looks like a natural blanket that's been wrapped around a baby with just some gentle folds in that front piece. Now it's ready to attach to the body. just finishing up that front top layer blanket seam. Um, it looks like it's lining up quite nicely with my body piece, but the nice thing about the folds in the blanket is that if I would have had a little extra, I could just put an extra fold in there to um, make it fit the front body piece. To finish sewing the doll together, take the back blanket piece and put it right side together with the right side of the front body piece and pin it in place. And then take your back hair piece and place that over top. It'll overlap the back blanket piece by about a quarter of an inch and pin in place. Then starting at the bottom corner of the hair, so that you catch the hair and the back blanket piece, go um, around, so around the bottom of the doll, around the top of the doll, and you'll be left with an opening here that we'll use to turn the doll right side out. So I've stayed just over a quarter inch away from the edge of the doll as I've sewn the two sides together. Um, a little more than a quarter so that the other seams that I've done previously will be hidden when I turn the doll right side out. Turn it right side out through the opening that we've left. Now we're ready to stuff the doll, so use medium amounts of stuffing and fluff it up a little bit and stuff the head and the bottom fairly firmly. Once the doll is firmly stuffed, we'll finish that opening with a ladder stitch. So starting from one side of the neck, we're going to go up to the hair about a quarter inch from the bottom and make a stitch and then directly below that we'll do another stitch in the flannel. So you can see why it's called a ladder stitch. The stitches are all vertical from each other and so when you hold it sideways it looks like a ladder. And when you pull on the thread that tightens up nicely and closes the gap. So I'm just finishing off the doll by hand stitching a bow to the front of her head. And there we have the finished product.